Hello and welcome to the Terry White Tech Blog. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I talk about all things tech, gadget reviews, and app reviews. Um, one of the questions I get all the time, when, especially whenever I do a tutorial or review that involves showing something that's on my iPhone or iPad, people always ask, well, how did you get your device to show up on your computer? How did you get it so that it was live on the screen while you were doing the review? I get this question you know, at least a couple times a week. So I figured I'd do this video to show you a couple of ways of doing it. As a matter of fact, what's even nice is that if you're in Mac OS 10.10 Mavericks, um, it's actually built in. You can even do it for free now. So I'm going to show you first a software application that I use. It's a third party utility. You do have to pay, purchase it if you want to use it. And then the second way I'll show you that's built into Mavericks, you can just use it for free. Um, now the first one is actually called Reflector. It's, re it's an app called Reflector. Here's the website for it. It's by a company called uh, airsquirrels.com. Um, if you just go to, if you just search Reflector for Mac or Google that, you will find it and it looks like it's about $13 currently. Uh, so that's this, that's the solution I've used in the past. And the reason I still use it and like it uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, it works via AirPlay. So your Mac and your iOS devices have to be on the same Wi-Fi network. Once you've done that, I'll bring up my iPad, for example. You just go to AirPlay at the bottom of your control panel on your iPad, and then you can just bring it up, and the AirPlay is down here. This is what I was referring to. So you switch from iPad to, you'll see your Mac, and you turn on mirroring, and then from there, uh, your, your iPad is live. You can just go through it, you can, uh, you know, do any live demo you want. And of course, if you're recording it, it becomes part of your recording. Now, um, the other thing I like about uh, Reflector is that if you go under device, you can even pick what skin it's going to use because it doesn't know which iPad you have. So when it first comes up, it gives you like the original iPad black thick frame. Well, I'm using an iPad Air 2, which Air and Air 2 are the same. Um, so I chose silver. If I want to use space gray, I can choose space gray. So I like that window dressing that it puts around it that kind of gives it that extra added touch. Now, the other reason I still use Reflector is because it, this solution allows multiple devices at the same time. So for example, if I bring up my iPhone here and I go to AirPlay and it shows my MacBook and I go ahead and turn on mirroring. Let's see if I can get it to come up here. There we go. There's my iPhone at the same time, my iPhone um, 6 Plus. So once again, I can go to that device and I can say that uh, the, phone, uh, the frame for this is a gold uh, 6 Plus and it will switch it to the gold 6 Plus frame. And again, I can be doing a live demo between both devices at the same time on screen and have them recorded. Yes, these windows can be resized so that if you want to do a smaller display while you've got something else going on, you can do that. You can pick them up. Oops. You can pick them up. You can move them around. You can put them anywhere you want on screen. And that's why I like Reflector because I can do multiple devices and it gives you that added visual touch of showing you the frame, which you can choose which frame, around your devices. Now, of course, um, that is a $13 purchase and it's, uh, it works great. However, let's quit Reflector. Of course, that'll send both devices away and it will turn off AirPlay, of course, because the AirPlay source went away. Um, so basically, Reflector is turning your Mac into an AirPlay device like an Apple TV. The next one, which is built in, um, requires you to actually connect your USB cable. So for example, I've got my USB cable here plugged into my Mac. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it into my iPhone 6 Plus. And when I do that, um, nothing happens <laughs> because all I did was just plug it in. Now, if it, it may default to popping up iPhoto, iPhoto. So you can just quit iPhoto. Um, and if you want to ever turn that off so it stops popping up iPhoto every time, launch uh, here if you do image capture. Launch image capture in the lower left-hand corner while your device is connected. You can say, uh, there's a little pop-up menu. You can say, when I connect this device, don't bring up anything. So I'll stop bringing up iPhoto every time I connect this. All right, so um, what, now that I've plugged in the iPhone, what's the free method? Well, the free method is actually built in using QuickTime. So you, you know, go find your QuickTime player in your applications folder, launch QuickTime player, 
and it opened up on my other display here. I'm just going to pull it over. It's looking for a QuickTime document to open. I'm going to say, nope, don't want to open anything. But what I do want to do is a new movie recording, not a screen recording, a movie recording. When I say a new movie recording, it's going to come up and it's bringing up my um, my camera, my built-in eyesight camera, which I've got covered up with a piece of cloth because I don't want you seeing that side. Okay, <laughs> anyway, um, what I'm going to do is this is the hidden tip. Down here is a little menu, of course, to record, start the recording, control your volume, so forth and so on. But there's a little pop-up menu right here that you can choose what device to record from. And I can say record from my iPhone 6 Plus, which is plugged in. So once I do that, it will change and then show me a live display, which again, I can resize of my iPhone 6 Plus. So um, what I like about this method, number one, it's free. Doesn't cost you anything if you have Mavericks, which is free. Uh, you can just do this, just plug it in. Now it does require a newer device. I believe this only works with the iPhone 5 and up. I don't think it works with a 4S. And of course it requires a newer iPad or newer iPad mini. Not sure what version, but it would require a fairly current device. Not the most current, but current. Um, the other thing I like about it is there's no lag. In other words, where it's with AirPlay, depending on your network, if your Wi-Fi network's very busy, a lot of people in the room where you're trying to do the demo all on the network, it could really lag behind uh, using AirPlay and Reflector just because of the nature of the network. Um, but the thing I don't like about this, two things that Reflector have this beat. Number one, you don't get the nice chrome or uh, image around your device. You just have the screen. And number two, it's one device at a time. So if I wanted to plug in my iPad and I, and I had a second cable and plugged it in, I still can't tell it to do show both devices at the same time, one or the other. So that's why I still use Reflector because there's sometimes when I'm trying to show both the iPad screen and the um, uh, iPhone screen at the same time, uh, Reflector does a better job. But when I'm in a, in a live stage demo or out in the field and I may not have a network that I can control or have all the devices on the right way because I have to be on the same subnet, then this method works great because it doesn't require a network. Just plug in the cable, bring up QuickTime Player, new movie recording, choose your device, your device is on screen, it's a window, and if you're recording your screen like I am today, then it becomes part of the recording. So, live demo, no lag, no, no problems, and it's free. So there you have it. I hope that answers the question of how do you get your devices on screen, and the one last thing I will mention or talk about, um, here I'll, I'll show it to you uh, in the browser here. Uh, let's go to the browser. And let's bring up another tab and let's go to Screen Flow 5. There we go. Screen Flow 5. This is the app that I use to do my recordings. So, this recording we're watching right now was recorded with Screen Flow 5 by Telestream. Now, the latest version, 5.0 or 5.0, whatever. Uh, also works directly with plugging your device in. So it knows that you've got an iOS device plugged in because it's taking advantage of that feature in Mavericks. So you don't need the QuickTime player. You just plug in your device and when you go new recording, there's a checkbox. Do you want to record your iPhone or iPad screen? iPod, iPod Touch? Yes. And it, beco it becomes a separate track in your recording. So I love that because you can fade it in, fade it out, move it around after the fact in post-processing. So those are all the questions I get. What recording software are you using? I'm using ScreenFlow. How do you get your iOS devices on your screen? Either Reflector or uh, QuickTime Player. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next tech episode. Take care.